The modern version of Daredevil we've seen come to life on TV and visually on the page for the most part can be attributed to one source, the now legendary run of Frank Miller and Klaus Janssen in 1979. The character got a major revitalization, giving Matt Murdock a more troubled and haunted backstory and his actions more brutal. Breathing new life and direction into the Devil of Hell's Kitchen was born from the collaboration between the two men. I'd been working on uh, Daredevil for a couple of years before Frank came on, and I had the distinct honor of inking people like Carmine Infantino and Bob Brown and Gene Colan and Gil Kane, one of my favorite artists of all time. Frank came on uh, much like any other person was scheduled to go on to the book, and nobody made a big deal about it at the time. It was a very uh, normal part of the process to change artists. And as a matter of fact, my job at the time was to make sure that uh, the characters looked uh, consistent and there was continuity in the books. Uh, so I always made sure that no matter who was the penciler, that Matt Murdock looked like Matt Murdock and Karen Page looked like Karen Page. At a certain point, Denny O'Neill came up to me, who was the editor of the book at the time, and uh, told me that uh, they had this young punk kid named Frank Miller who was gonna be the penciler on the book. And I said, great. And he was, at the time, Frank, Frank's pencils were incredibly dark and heavy and very detailed. And so uh, it was not very difficult to ink him at all. It was, uh, it was a great pleasure. Daredevil changed when Frank came on. Frank was very much interested in some of the Japanese influence that he was reading at the time. And he incorporated a lot of manga and a lot of uh, anime uh, or even early anime at the time. Bringing in, you know, things like uh, the Ninja Warriors and even Elektra had a little bit of a Japanese influence to her. But Frank definitely radicalized in some ways. The, the character revamped him. Daredevil, now a ninja more than ever before, was one of the many changes they imparted. They created new characters who are now essential pillars to Murdoch's story, such as Elektra and his mentor Stick. Also, they further established known foes such as Bullseye and brought former Spider-Man villain Kingpin into the fold. I have to say Frank was incredibly creative at that time, and we were both very, very ambitious and very hungry. It was a partnership that was really beneficial to both of us. We were in a lot of ways on the same point in our career, very creative, uh, very willing to try things, and it was a great period of time. Those three years that Frank and I worked on Daredevil was incredibly inspiring, I think, and creative for both of us. And to some degree, the joke is that nobody told us we couldn't do this. And so we did some stuff that I don't think anyone has really matched since then. Miller and Jansen became the beating heart of Hell's Kitchen. Forming a bond of trust happened over time between the two of them as they became more attuned to each other's styles and methodology. I try to adapt to any new penciler. And so if there was any kind of adaptation to Frank's uh, pencils when Frank came onto the book, it was part of the normal process. It wasn't anything out of the ordinary. Um, whenever I ink somebody, I always try to be very diligent in keeping the best parts of them and maybe helping them along in the areas where they might be deficient. The real change that happened between Frank and I and in Frank's uh, pencils uh, happened when Frank decided to stop doing full pencils. So when we were about one year into the run, Frank decided to do just breakdowns, which at that time, breakdowns don't really exist anymore. So that was something that, that happened and was very unique to that period of time. And breakdowns were simply the drawing without any blacks. So they were kind of half drawing, although, you know, to me, um, everything was really there. Uh, John Buscema at that time did a lot of breakdowns because uh, he was doing so much work. Frank decided that he was, wanted to do other projects like the Wolverine miniseries that he did with Chris Claremont. And uh, in order to get more work out of him, he did less complete pencils. And eventually in the third year of our run, 
Frank was doing drawings on eight and a half by 11 uh, typewriter paper, and they're wonderful to read. Uh, he would draw the entire issue out, and he would dialogue the story and the characters and the balloons. And literally, I would get 20 pages or 21 pages with the comic drawn out. And I would take that in the last year of our run, and I would draw it up, pencil it, and ink it, and then color it, uh, which was a crazy amount of work. But like, like I said, nobody told us we couldn't actually do it physically or you know, mentally. So it was a lot of fun. It was just a very ambitious time. The synergy that Frank and I had allowed us to be uh, very trusting in each other's contributions to the material, to the art. And I'm very grateful that Frank had that trust in me. I certainly had that trust in him, that he was always doing the best possible work that he could do. Uh, he never hacked it out. Uh, it was always very thoughtful and very considered. And uh, I think we have that relationship uh, still to this day, where there is trust in each other to do the best work that we can do and make each other look good. From Miller's unique sense of storytelling to Jansen's strong use of color and fluid line work, Daredevil was reborn. One of the most important decisions they made was in the way they went about their color choices. The bright use were a stark contrast to the increasingly dark tone of the comic. You know, the coloring on Daredevil was uh, like uh, so many other books at that time, a very secondary consideration. People were not as invested in, in the coloring process as much as they are now with digital coloring, of course. I became frustrated at a certain point uh, because the coloring that we were getting was oftentimes very contradictory to the storytelling that we were trying to do. Um, so at a certain point, I took on the responsibility of coloring. I think it was mostly in the, in the last year. And I felt that that was a more consistent vision. Um, so basically there was only the two of us on the book, plus Denny as, as the editor. But Frank and I were doing basically the whole book. So we were writing, well, Frank was writing, and I was penciling, inking, and coloring. And that allowed us to have a very singular, consistent, united vision. Uh, you don't want to do a image where there might be split lighting on a face or some effect that the penciler or the inker is trying to achieve and then have the colorist come in and ignore it. It's not the best way of working. So it allowed the two of us to have a very unified approach to the work, cohesive. I think cohesive is a better word. Their time on the book will go down in history as one of the most influential takes on the character. There are so many panels that are etched onto our memories that we're able to recall when we transport ourselves back into the world of Daredevil. In terms of pride and, and, and Daredevil, I'm so proud of uh, all of the work that Frank and I did together. But the, there was a sequence that uh, toward the end of the run when Elektra was in a movie theater with Ben Urich and uh, Electra shoved her sigh through the back of the chair into the person who was sitting in the chair. And I thought the pacing, the rhythm, the drawing, the colors of it, the fact that there was uh, such interesting lighting coming from the movie screen, I loved that, that sequence. I thought it was just terrific.